these? Yep. Huh. No. Just one. Just Never seen one. them before. I put one of them in the pan and then get my scooper, my little bitty scooper. And it may be in those drawers or it may be over there by Matthew. Yep. We are in business. We are in business. The first big project for Muscle Nerds next year is we are doing a web series. Now I'm, I'm having to write this, produce this. I may have uh, kind of a bit part in it, but I am certainly not going to be one of the main ones in front of the camera. No, Ryan, Ryan can't wait. But we're doing Starquake. The Chronicles of Alcor. Hey, that's fine. It's well, yeah. a division. <laughs> it's a feeder off of the main event. That's mm -hmm. what I want. I mean, if you're going to continue the switches, fine. That's fine. But I, I want, I don't want you to be so regimented on oh. one thing. Oh no, no. Yeah, we've got other plans for other stuff. Like I said, we've got uh, Starquake, which hopefully will be an avenue to pull in some money. <laughs> Oh, we need, yes. Because, you know, I never started Muscle Nerds thinking I was going to get rich. You know, that would be delusional. But uh, it does need to generate its own revenue. You know, because otherwise, yeah, I, as much as I love it, I can't fund it completely. Have you I mean, figured it up? Many, well, no, not formally. But I know when it takes a bite out of my paycheck and it hasn't the thus far. Just, this is the concept art for our Alcor character. I'm not making that one. No, you don't have to. We're going to have this one made. Who's going to wear that? Ryan is. Okay. This, this was designed for him. We were... <laughs> but the thing is, what do you want to do with it now? I want to see it, you know, take on a life of its own. I've gotten more comments from people who have said they're just, they've been inspired to go back to the gym. They never felt like they could, you know, that they belonged or anything like that. And they see us, they're like, wow, you know, these are real people. These aren't the ideals you see in the gym commercials and well, stuff like that. who's so, seeing you? People on social media. And, oh, is that going to be a label? It'd be a product, you know, not so much, you know, it'd be like Muscle Nerds presents Starquake, you know, the Chronicles of Alcor. And Alcor is just the first character. We've dreamed up a couple and of others. And you're going to put that on t-shirts and all that kind of stuff? Well, uh, we're doing a web series. Alco. Alco. Alcor. Huh? Or Alcor. Uh, it's going to be a web series, and we'll sell merchandise that ties into it with the, the show's logo and stuff like that. Who's going to pay for all this? This one is like his grandmother. If he has a nickel, he will spend the entire thing in one day. You ever see that before? A closed captioned phone. Let's do it to it. Yeah. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. So I'll let you have a seat there for me, like normal. Alrighty. Alright, I'll be right back. I knew I needed an audiologist um, after I had gotten out of the Air Force and uh, where I was working, they came in and did a, a health fair for all the employees. And this company came in and did was doing little quickie hearing exams. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> and I sat down in the chair. You know, and they're like, oh, honey, I think we need to schedule a follow-up appointment for you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I figured as much. First time I got hearing aids, it was an overwhelming experience to hear all the things I couldn't hear. I didn't realize I couldn't hear anymore. And it's a little, a little 
scary. You know, the, all of a sudden the world is big again. Well, a few years later, I had to give up my hearing aids for some repairs. And all of a sudden, I couldn't hear everything again. And that was equally scary. Baseball. Baseball. Good. Cowboy. Cowboy. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. Northwest. Base tone. Grandson. Dil Dylan Thomas. <laughs> Ice cream. Ice cream. All right, good, good job. Give it to me straight, Doc. I can take it. <laughs> we'll go for all of it. I'll get these from you. With Starquake, we are done with the three teaser scenes that we want to film, or we're done scripting the three teaser scenes we want to film uh, for our Kickstarter campaign. Uh, each one includes one of the three main superhero characters. I have a tentative timetable to try and get s at least a few things filmed in November. Hopefully we'll have all of the, the ducks in a row by then. That will give us time to get things edited, get effects added and things like that. Uh, all through the Christmas season, because I've read statistically, not a lot of people want to donate to things like a Kickstarter campaign during the winter holidays. For the teasers, we have prototype costumes made, but those aren't gonna hold up for an actual series. We need much more professional, in-depth costumes, probably need at least 15,000 just in that. I am making dinner for a meeting with the potential director of photography on the Starquake project. Tonight, I have a date with Chance. <laughs> How's it going over there? Oh, it's coming along. Great. So I like, I like the scripts. What's that? I like the scripts. Yeah. I meant to ask anything you see insurmountable. You know, I, I can see it. I think it's all pretty, pretty clear. I mean, it's good introductions to each character and it's kind of like your, you know, basic superhero teaser introductions. Uh, one specific question I had was about um, the uh, acorn character. The what? Uh, the uh, later on in the Acorn script, when it, when it says Alcor. we're seeing what? Al Alcor. Oh, Alcor. Sorry, Alcor. <laughs> Alcor. Got it. Well, when we're seeing when we're revealing his costume and we're only seeing part of it, um, do you see that in like a series of close-ups? Like, so when he's it says there's a I series have an of example shots. of that. You have a, a sample. You have like storyboard or no? Um, where it was done initially. Uh, oh, okay, cool. It is actually a variation on what they did in an episode of the Twilight Zone called The Howling Man. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, a werewolf transformation. Yeah, it's the devil, but yeah. Oh, uh, okay. All right. See, as he walks past one of those pillars, he's a little bit more of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with first time directors, they, you know, there's this kind of uh, blissful ignorance that actually can be beneficial to the production because since they don't know really what's possible and what's not possible, it may result in a, a better result, <laughs> a better film in the end, but also it can be a disaster. So we're going to hopefully land more towards the former. In your mind, how is, the, how is the costume actually coming on? Like in the world of this story, how is this costume? Like Iron Man, for instance, he's got like, you know, nano machines that right. put it on him, right? So how is his costume? You, and the other guy's when we, magic. When we so. devised the concept, 
these characters, you know, they don't have, you know, some genius sewing expert who comes up with the costume form. These costumes are manifestation, physical manifestations of the energies within them. Think uh, Green Lantern. Okay. So. Do, and do, do these actors, uh, are they experienced actors? We're, we're going to take acting lessons and, you know, try and hash out as much as we possibly can. First time actors? I, I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. I'd say I'm a little concerned about the actors and their lack of experience. Uh, Non-actors, a lot of times, can be not good. I mean, do you have any questions for me as far as just, you know, moving forward with making this? Yeah, budget. <laughs>